Lexus recently revealed their new electric car. It's a fully electric car. It's got a bigger battery pack and there's something a bit strange about it. As far as I can tell, it's the only electric car on sale in most countries around the world with this type of battery. Nickel metal hydride battery pack is what it has. Now, Lexus, I just had to double check this. I had to just Google this to make sure that I wasn't living in some alternative universe, in some sort of weird twilight zone. It is the premium brand of Toyota. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Just want to say thank you for subscribing. It's great to have you. I'll be at the electric car show on the 23rd of September. I'll be giving a speech at 12 o'clock on the Saturday. Love to see you there if you can make it. Now, if you can make it, I'll put a link in the description below so you can get a discount on tickets. It will be, as far as I can tell, the biggest electric car show in Australia. So it's going to be a really cool event. Lexus has removed the old 54.4 kilowatt battery pack from the 2022 model of this EV and they've replaced it with a much bigger 72.8 kilowatt hour pack that gives the car around 135 kilometers more range. Now, of course, it's a Lexus, so it's not cheap. The cabin gets an update. It now has a larger touchscreen, uh, better software, USB-C charging ports, pretty much all the standard stuff you get in most cars, wireless Apple CarPlay, and it comes with satellite navigation capable of tapping into real-time traffic and parking information, stuff that Google Maps can do anyway. Now, I was reading this story and I you know, wasn't thinking too much about it. I scrolled down and I read that um, actually this car costs $80,000. And I thought, well, that's not too bad. And then I thought, and I thought, actually, there's a sports luxury version, a cheaper version that's now discounted. It's now only $87,700. I thought... That's not bad for a sports luxury version of a Lexus, right? Is it? Well, even the standard base model luxury version for $79,990, by the way, that's Australian dollars, so around about $60,000 US dollars, seemed like a decent deal for a luxury Lexus. But then I saw the powertrain, and the powertrain appears to be exactly the same powertrain that is in the Toyota BZ4X. They've got the same power figures, power and torque is identical. 150 kilowatt of power about 220 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. Then I saw the efficiency and I thought, doesn't seem quite right. This is a small car. I mean, it's basically the same size, almost identical in size to the BYD Addo 3. And it's got a much bigger battery pack than the BYD Addo 3. In fact, about 20% bigger. It should be getting more range than the Addo 3, but it's not. In fact, the range is 450 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. Out of three, about the same, maybe 460, depending on who you're asking on the day. So why is it that a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is meant to be less energy dense than a lithium ternary battery, is getting the BOD out of three the same range on a much smaller battery pack with the same size cars? Now, just to confirm here, I did check there's no gold in this Lexus, uh, weighing it down. It doesn't have any gold steering wheel or gold anything. There's no diamonds. There's, there's, there's no like you know luxurious metals that could make the car heavy to make it get this kind of range. So I was thinking, what is going on? Let's do some digging. Did that. Turns out <clears throat> the Lexus UX Hybrid and the UX uh, 300E, so both these cars, the fully electric version and the hybrid version, have a nickel metal hydride battery pack. This is, to be fair, pretty ancient technology. I think I had a nickel metal hydride battery pack that I was using for my drill when I used to be a tradie many years ago for a couple of years. I was using that uh, about 20, 21 years ago. And of course, when lithium came out, everyone moved away from nickel metal hydride and went, wow, lithium's amazing. It's really lightweight, much, much lighter. It's one of the big differences. It's also more energy dense. Now, nickel metal hydride batteries are, of course, um, quite a bit heavier, therefore, than lithium cells. In 2010, a website called Auto How Stuff Works said that the most obvious difference between lithium ion and nickel metal hydride batteries is the material used to store the power. 
Lithium ion batteries can store a lot of energy. Nickel metal hydro batteries use hydrogen to store energy with nickel and another metal, such as possibly titanium, keeping a lid on the hydrogen ions. They also said that nickel metal hydro batteries back in 2010 were cheaper to buy and that there was a, a key reason why Toyota was using them at the time and still is today in many of their hybrids. However, weight is the key drawback. Nickel metal hydro batteries are larger and heavier usually than lithium ion. Weight matters in cars since the battery power will have to overcome the, the vehicle's inertia. Lighter battery packs with higher energy density make it easier to get the car going. And of course, that means more range. Now, this is what they also said, power. Lithium ion and nickel metal hydro batteries can actually hold a similar amount of power, but the lithium ion cells can be charged and discharged more rapidly. Lithium ion also doesn't have as much of a memory effect, which occurs when a battery is recharged before it is fully empty. This can diminish a battery's capacity. Lithium ion batteries are less affected by memory effect than nickel metal hydride batteries. So all of this would explain the reason for that lower range. And also the reason for the fact that the, well, the Lexus EVs or hybrids seem a bit heavier than their rivals. So what is the reason that Toyota's using these battery packs? Well, one, cost. They're cheaper. Two, Toyota already has the access to these battery packs. They already have the production line set up. They've been basically putting these batteries into their cars for decades. It's cheaper, it's easier, and it enables them to make more profit from you. Now, my key question here is, if you're gonna go out and buy a Lexus EV or a Lexus hybrid or a plug-in hybrid, do you want a luxury experience? Do you feel like this is gonna give you a luxury experience when you know that the battery chemistry in your EV is, um, well, dated, old, heavy, and not as good as cheap EVs that are being made in China? Now, I know that sounds sensational, but actually it's all true. I'm curious to know your thoughts on this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.